The protesters showed their support today for the occupiers of Zuccotti Park. This is October 13th, day 13 of Occupy LA, and you're watching Inside Out News. Health inspectors from the city of Los Angeles came and talked to the organizers here. They asked them to shut down their food tent until they had certified food handlers to handle the food that is being distributed to the protesters. The city has also notified the protesters that they are going to be turning the sprinkler system back on. This is just a, a reminder to the protesters that they need to leave the grass at 10 p.m. and set up tents on the sidewalk. The protesters were hoping to get some sort of support from the city council, which recently came out with a and passed a resolution that stated that they supported the actions of the protesters. They were hoping that along with this, this resolution that they would get some sort of support so that they could stay on the grass indefinitely. But with this recent notice today from the city that the sprinkler system will be turned back on, it seems that they were unable to garner that kind of support. So the protesters will continue to have to move from the grass at 10 p.m. onto the sidewalk at 6 a.m. and then at 6 a.m. back onto the, side, onto the grass to continue their occupation. While the occupiers here in Los Angeles did not have any of their own official marches today, they did support many of the marches that were happening around the city, including a march held by workers from a company called Sempra. Sempra is a gas company. These workers are unionized and they went on strike to fight Sempra wanting to take away some of their benefits and to cut wages. Another march that went on today was in support of the prisoners who are currently on hunger strike at Pelican Bay. The protesters marched around the city and then came into City Hall Park and stood at the steps on the north lawn and, and had an open mic where some of the, the occupiers and some of the family members of these prisoners gave speeches. The prisoners are currently on strike because of bad conditions and what they say is torture that is going on within the prison yard. About 70 protesters marched from City Hall to the Superior Court of Los Angeles on Hill Street to show support for a group of people who served papers to the judges there asking for an investigation into whether or not some of the judges who have been serving on bank related cases specifically dealing with foreclosures whether or not they have been receiving money from banks they claim that many of these judges are receiving donations, private funds from some of the major banking corporations here in the United States and that it compromises or that it is a con conflict of interest on the part of the judges to be serving on these cases while taking these donations. My name is Eric Rothenberg. Your name? What's your name? Charles C. Miller. And, and what's your name? Susan Dea Hamwe. Okay, so what exactly did you guys do today in the Supreme Court? Or is it Superior Court? Superior Court. We served the chief judge with a precipi, which is an order from a superior to an inferior. Within the precipi, it requires the chief judge to notify all of the judges that he supervises to step down from office and disqualify themselves in any case involving a bank or a bank issue. The reason for this is very simple the retirement and benefit program for every judge in the state of California is at least 60% invested in banked products, which includes mortgage-backed securities. So everyone that has come before a judge on a bank issue for a lot of years has not received a fair shake. There's a conflict of interest. 
And when the judges knew that they had a conflict of interest or knew or should have known that they had a conflict of interest, they committed judicial corruption, which is cause for disqualification. The papers that were served on the chief judge were served on Governor Brown and the Attorney General on Tuesday. It requires Governor Brown, under his capacity as the chief magistrate, the chief law enforcement officer for the state of California, to investigate every judge in the state that is receiving a benefit from the banks and sanction them by disqualifying them and requires them to clean up their own mess. In other words, contact every person that they've stolen a home from. And I use the word stolen qualifiedly to particularly state the cause of action. It's straight up theft. When you're being paid as a judge by the banks through your retirement benefit system to, uh, to kick someone out of their home, it's flat wrong. Everyone in the country understands this concept. And that's why we chose California because there's so many people right now in California that are suffering from this judicial corruption. And what puts the three of you in, a, in this particular position to be able to serve papers to the judges? Any citizen of the state of California has the authority to serve papers on any public official. The issue is this and simply this. We the people created the government. We own the government because we created it and we funded it. We paid for everything. We own this building. We own the governor's office, the office itself, and the building itself. We have the right to make complaints to them, and they have the public duty, the public obligation, which they're paid to perform very well, as a matter of fact, to listen to our complaints and investigate. They have failed to do so. Many of the protesters here at Occupy Los Angeles are concerned about what will be happening tomorrow morning at Zuccotti Park on Wall Street. Mayor Michael Bloomberg told the protesters there that they must leave the park by 7 a.m., at which point they will have a cleaning crew come into the park and clean the park for about four hours. The mayor told the protesters there who are occupying that they may return back to the park after the cleaning crew has left, but that they will not be allowed to bring any sleeping bags, tents, or tarps. They will not be allowed to lay on the ground. In response to the mayor's call for eviction of the protesters in Zuccotti Park, the protesters here at Occupy Los Angeles decided to put on an impromptu march. They marched over around the L.A. courthouse where the Michael Jackson trial is currently going on. They were hoping to get some time with the reporters there. In fact, some of the protesters went over and tried to talk to, to the reporters there. One was from Fox 11 News. They tried to convince the reporter that they should be covering the occupation here and what is happening on Wall Street rather than talking about the Michael Jackson case. While one of the reporters was trying to do his report for Fox 11 News, some of the occupiers holding a large banner moved behind the camera to try to get into the shot. The reporter was aware that the occupiers were behind him and asked the cameraman to move the camera to a different angle. And as the camera moved to one angle, the protesters moved their banner as well. And then the cameraman tried to move another angle, and then the protesters moved to the other side. Eventually, the protesters decided that they had done enough for the cause and they went back to the encamp encampment, allowing the reporter to continue his report on the Michael Jackson trial. After the march, I asked some of the protesters what they thought about the upcoming eviction in Zuccotti Park and if they were aware that the park is privately owned. Zuccotti Park is owned by Brooksfield Office Properties and was named after the chairman of the company, John Zuccotti. Uh, my, def my, my opinion on that is he's basically trying to, uh, I don't know, what I assume is if you have a large gathering of people, the easiest way to spread them out is to, you know, come up with some idea and say, hey, look, we need, we need to clean this all of a sudden. They might, they might actually have mandates where they clean the park, of course, you know, they got to keep it, you know, going and nice and uptight. But um, I think, honestly, he's kind of hoping that 
once they do that, a lot of them will be lazy and not come back, which is inherently what I think probably would happen. So if anything, I'm telling the Wall Street people to stay there, don't leave. Do you think the protesters still have a right to occupy a park that is not publicly owned? Do you think it still falls under their First Amendment right? That's a tough call. Um, yes and no. Yes on one level, I know. Uh, but, like, you know, yes because uh, it's publicly used when it suits their benefit. So it only stands to reason that it should be publicly used when it doesn't suit their benefit out of fairness. Uh, but, you know, if, if it's their own property, I can see where their mentality is, but I don't agree with it. What do you think about the fact that this park, though it is open for the public use, is privately owned. Uh, do you think the protesters should have a right to occupy it nonetheless? Of course, of course, because like he, Bloomberg was arresting people because they were wearing masks, and that was in violation of some 19th century law. So uh, it's clear that they're cherry-picking whatever law they want. Uh, to, to just keep the peace. And I think this is, this is what Bloomberg has to expect. You know, so I'm not surprised at all. This ends our broadcast for tonight. We will return tomorrow with another report. This is Margot Pius signing off for Inside Out News. Good night.